Yes, so I would request Professor Hari Krishnan to uh, begin the session. So Professor Hari Krishnan is a professor in the Division of uh, Mechanical Engineering from uh, Coaching uh, University of Science and Technology. So over to you, Professor Hari Krishnan. Hi, thank you very much, Sahil. Very good afternoon to one and all. So myself, Dr. Hari Krishnan, I am an assistant professor from Division of Mechanical Engineering, School of Engineering, Coaching University of Science and Technology, Kochi, Kerala. So I welcome all to the open form community. I would say it's a community because it's an open source software and we need to help each other in order to gain knowledge. And regarding my background, I did my PhD as well as postdoc from IIT Madras. I completed my PhD in, from IIT Madras in 2019 and I was working as a postdoc uh, in IIT Madras for almost two and a half years. So I received an institute, institute research award for my PhD thesis. And I have almost eight to nine years of experience in CFD by using various commercial software as well as open source software. So I'll quickly introduce about my research topics before I begin, especially related to CFD. So this is a this single slide I would just like to explain or briefly summarize my experience in CFD for last eight years or nine years. So I worked in various problems, starting from single phase problems and multi-phase problems. I hope you might be knowing the difference between single phase and multi phase. In multi phase problem, we have more than one phase. So it can be multiple liquids, it can be air, water, or it can be air, solid particles, etc. The first slide or first part of the slide indicates single phase flow in a corrugated channel. Corrugated channel is nothing but a channel in which we have some sort of corrugation. And what happens? When we have corrugations, we know that there are there can be some circulations present inside the chamber, and and I was mostly interested in the flow transition phenomena happening inside various corrugated channels. This was part of my PhD work. So this part actually I was using open form for doing the simulation. I was using direct numerical simulations for doing this part of the study. And multi-phase flow, I did two different. Uh, approaches the first one is Euler in Lagrangian approach I hope you may be knowing the difference between Euler in approach and Lagrangian approach Lagrangian approach we are tracking these particles individually so this is actually a uh, two dimension simulation for a makeshift isolation enclosure what is a makeshift isolation enclosure so we know that during COVID so the hospital we know that there was a constraint about the availability of hospital rooms so Government tried to convert these rooms, uh, available school rooms, as well as some auditoriums to some small isolation enclosures. And this, this, those rooms are known as makeshift isolation enclosures. And in this particular simulation, what we did is we considered droplet spread in an hospital room. So we know that when we talk, why we are wearing masks, when we are using, when we talk or when we cough or when we sneeze, thousands of particles are injected into the room, right? So we are trying to prevent it. We are trying to screen it with the help of a mask, right? So in this particular simulation, what we considered is somebody is lying. So this is actually a bed, a two-dimensional simulation. And this is actually a bed. And somebody is sneezing or somebody is coughing. So thousands of particles are injected. And this is actually a closed room in which we have an inlet here and outlet here. So some sort of ventilation is provided. So what happens is when somebody sneezes, these particles enters into the room and due to this ventilation or circulation person inside the room, so this is actually spreading within the room. So in this part of the work, what we considered is how to prevent or how to reduce the risk of contamination or how to reduce or how can we efficiently flush these particles away by changing different parameters. And the last part is a part of the work I did uh, as, as part of my postdoc. So here we just consider particle cluster falling in a pool of liquid. So we know that when we have a cluster of particle, it behaves like fluid, right? So when we have a bucket of sand, and if you just pour it, it may look like a fluid flow rather than as individual solid particle flow, right? So we use oiler and oiler in approach, in which we have some container, is filled with air, it's filled with water and air. We are dropping a bucket of sand particles into it. And its distribution is analyzed with the help of Computation fluid dynamics. So the left hand side and right hand side, uh, uh, left hand side figure is an animation I made in paraform. Uh, so this part of the work I did 
using open foam, using multi phase oilering foam, and the right hand side is the particle cloud shape evolution with respect to time, and left hand side is the two dimensional view corresponding to that. So, moving on to the content, so this is a brief overview. Uh, my research topic. So I hope at least some of you are new to this open form. I would like to know how many of you are uh, doing open form for the first time, like learning open form, or not at all familiar with open form. Yes, I can see there are more number of hands. So don't worry, even if you don't, even if you are not uh, getting the first simulation. I will tell my experience when I started learning open form in 2014 it took one week for me to install it at least you were did you were able to complete the installation within a day or two right so it was almost one week so if you are no if you are facing some challenges so be ready to face it there are a lot of learnings that's what i would say at this point of time yes you can lower your hands so regarding the content so as i said uh, there are multiple sessions and i'll be mainly talking about introduction to meshing and jananima madam already gave a very good inter inter introduction to the computational fluid dynamics and brief overview about it so i will start with that then i will move on to meshing so basically i will be covering what is meshing why it is important and there is one more session in the afternoon by dheeraj sir and sir will be taking the advanced portions for the meshing and i will also touch upon some basic things like mesh generation in open form what way we are uh, making mesh we can do meshing in open form etc so let me move on so as i said i will just quickly in two to three slides i will quickly explain what is computational fluid dynamics once again so we know that any physical phenomena with certain assumptions can be modeled with the help of some mathematical equations right so if if it is a fluid flow the mathematical equation is known as navier stokes equations so these mathematical models can be linear or polynomial relationship differential equations and partial differential equations etc so for a fluid mechanics problem we know that the governing equations or the mathematical model that fits is partial differential equation and the basic equations are known as mass momentum conservation equations right so the main important parameter is with certain assumptions the assumptions are very very important so with certain assumptions only we can convert that into mathematical models if our assumptions are wrong we will get wrong results so in computational fluid dynamics what we do is we know that the basic governing equation that is navier stokes equation or mass and momentum conservation equations so they are partial differential equations right so as i said in the previous uh, session so we are going to convert these partial differential equations into set of algebraic equations so what do we mean by algebraic equations algebraic equations are nothing but ax is equal to b form or we have certain unknowns and we need to find unknowns by analyzing or by solving a set of equations right so the first part is so when we convert these partial differential equations so let us consider a simple case let's say i have a simple case that is flow through a channel so these are the walls and there is some fluid in entering some fluid leaving so this is a physical problem so physical problem let's say somebody asked me uh, if i give the velocity of 1 meter per second what will be the pressure at the outlet if somebody asks these kind of questions so the first thing is we will just try to make a geometry and we will also learn what are the conditions if it, what are the fluids used if it is water it's a newtonian fluid and if it is a paint or if it is blood we should consider non newtonian fluids etc so there are certain assumptions that is involved in this part and the second part is we are going to divide this domain into certain number of cells so that part is known as meshing so when we have domain we are just dividing this domain Do certain number of cells as I as in the previous session also Madam already introduced this thing. So then what happens? We are going to apply these equations here. So in each cell we are going to apply this governing equation as well as we know that when we have a partial differential equation, we or fully normal differential equations, we should also have we should also need a boundary conditions to solve this. So along with the boundary conditions as well as initial conditions, we will be solving these. and finally okay when we solve this 
So when we apply this partial differential equation in each cell, finally we will be getting an equation in the form of algebraic equation. So that means, so you, so in a flow problem, you know that the variables are u, v, w, that is x component, y component, and z component of the velocity and pressure. So these are the unknowns. So we are essentially calculating or identifying the x velocity, y velocity, z velocity, as well as pressure in each and every point within the domain. So that one we are actually identifying with the help of solving ax is equal to b4. So when we come, when we discrete, when we divide this domain and apply these governing equations and discretized equations, I, we would say we finally we will get an equation in the form of ax is equal to b. So ax is equal to b, as I said earlier, is an algebraic equation equation and we need to solve this with the help of computers so the computational fluid dynamics indicate we are basically using computers to solve fluid dynamics problems so if the number of cells so I, to say the level of difficulty I, about cfd if the number of cell is 10 or let's say uh, 30 so we are need to find 30 unknowns that is you not all, not just 30 unknowns we have 30 equations and we need to find unknowns 30 into 4 because u, v, w, and p we need to identify in each and every point. So if we have 30 cells, these 30, these 30 unknowns, 30 into 4 unknowns we need to find by solving ax is equal to b equation, right? So manually calculating it is not possible. So we are with the help of computers, we are solving this. So there are different approaches, there are different methods uh, for doing this. So those things you will learn in the upcoming classes. Up, upcoming session so what are the applications so i think you may be already familiar some of the applications are listed here the first one is flow pass buff body the aerodynamics uh, and second one is more relevant now so the covid once again there is another wave is expecting so in this particular animations what they considered is somebody sitting in a restaurant and he is sneezing or he is uh, talking so these particles are injected into the room and deposited in the table so this is a computational fluid, fluid dynamics simulation based uh, animation and nowadays it is widely used to understand the spread of these contaminant particles or this virus laden droplet and the third one is another interesting one this is battery thermal management system in an electric vehicle we know that nowadays there are a lot of accidents happening in uh, evs right so some fires it was reported by multiple manufacturers that fires are occurring in different uh, battery systems that is mainly due to poor thermal management so if we know that there are multiple lithium ion batteries are stacked into a battery system and we know that during the charging and discharging there will be heat generation and if the heat genera generated heat is not dissipated in a proper way what happens there will be a temperature gradient within the temperature will rise obviously and also the temperature gradient will also exist within the battery or within the system. So when there is a temperature gradient, there is a good chance of short circuiting and that leads to the fire. So battery thermal management system is one of the leading topics in which the computer fluid dynamics people are working on. And some of the other interesting part is like this one is a floating object. So this one I downloaded from YouTube, the link is also provided. So floating body in a container. And the last one is a propeller in an open water, that's again open form based simulation. So these are some of the applications of computation fluid dynamics. So let me move on. So I just covered what do we mean by computational fluid dynamics, right? So there are different packages involved or the, there are different packages are available in the market and for doing these kind of simulations. So most, some of the most popular CFD packages are in tone here. First one is ANSYS. I hope you might be knowing ANSYS. I have a Fluent as well as CFX. Then Star CCM, Comsol, Autodesk CFD, Simulia, DSC, DSS Simulia, etc. And OpenFoam and Jerry's. The main difference between the packages shown in the left hand side and the right hand side is the packages shown in the left hand side is purely commercial software. So if you want to use it, you may need to pay some amount. We know that. For some softwares like ANSYS Fluent student versions are available, but there are very limited uh, features available for students. So that is available for one year and I think sell 
size up to 5 lakh will be provided and if you want to use above that it is not possible you may need to pay lakhs of rupees to get the license on the other hand the right hand side software like jerris or open form <coughs> are open source software so anyone can download anyone can install in any system and you can use it no need to pay any single amount of money to anyone so open form as well as jerris are some of the open source cfd packages widely used in the community so before we move on to open form we should also know why we what are the advantages of open form or what are the advantages of open source software so basic thing as you know already is free of cost as i said earlier it's available and you can install you can download anyone can do it there is no licensing issue so the, you don't need to pay any amount for license and the second one is source mode modification source code modification that means these software especially these proprietary software or commercial software they may have some unique method for computing some certain things so they will they always keep their code as a black box so if you want to do some modification in the source code it is not possible on the other hand open form or any open source software it is very easy the code itself is available and some modifications if you want to do it is possible and the third part is collaborative development as i shown in this image so there are let's say you are you are working in india and you have a collaborator in us japan etc and you they are also working certain companies so if you want to work on a similar problem using a commercial software they should also have access to the software right they should also purchase the software on the other hand if you are using an open source software wherever maybe you can actually work together you can put your code in a github or something they can download it they can make use of it they can actually improve the code they can identify if there are any mistakes or if we can improve the code so this collaborative development is possible when we have open source software so even though we have certain advantages there are disadvantages also the first part is lack of documentation so we know that when we want to learn a software we should have some they should provide some documents right to begin with if you are not familiar so the lack of documentation is one of the part and nowadays we have actually uh, documentation part is really improved uh, day by day and the second part is gui what is gui graphical user interface so right now i am using let's say powerpoint and if i want to change the font size i can just double click and change the font size right so basically we have a graphical user interface for doing all these things on the other hand if i use latex or some other uh, software without gui i need to type some command to reduce the font size or increase the font size or if you want to add some effect so i may need to use some cla command line interface to modify that so similarly in open form or mainly in open form gui is not available for doing the simulations post for post processing the results gui is available that is known as para view and the open form version of para view is known as para form okay and the last part is user friendliness so as compared to commercial software it is not that attractive you may not get the results within a day or if you are doing the simulation for the first time i'm pretty sure that you won't be able to get the results in a day or two it may take some time for you to so user friendliness is one of the disadvantages of open source softwares so briefly i will just quickly go through this slides so open form is a full form of open source field operation and manipulation it's a finite volume method and it's based on c++ language and it started in early 90s from imperial college london by henry weller and jasak so so when we specifically talk about documentation so the interesting part is the open form user guide available in the open form directory is only around 200 pages on the other hand if you just consider a commercial software like ansys fluent the user guide itself is 5000 pages and paid contents as well as other tutorials are also available along with this 5000 pages so the support for the commercial software is huge so where to begin or how to begin so open form in the olden days also they used to conduct workshop yearly and workshop materials will be available free free of free to all and if you can refer this workshop materials to begin with and chama university cfd with open form there's a course by professor hakan nilson so the course assignments are also available online 
and from india we have a very good group from iit bombay that is foci project i hope we already pile madam give introduction about foci's initiatives and along with that training companies like some of the uh, websites from wolf dynamics cfd naina they also provided they are they are also providing few tutorials to own open form and some youtube channels like joseph nagy and other contributors so i would like to appreciate the effort by foci team that is mainly the attempts from india india we know that there is a group uh, for foci the support of the national mission of education through ict so basically they are actually promoting the open source software for last 10 to 12 years so there are multiple opportunities for students those who are learning so such as case study projects research migration projects etc so through these materials you can you will also get an opportunity to work with open form as well as you will also get a certificate from foci as well as iit bombay so those things are already explained along with that explain by payal madam so along with that one interesting part is um, along with the case study so if you are working on some research problem so, okay let us say you are working on a flow plus bluff body so it is very difficult to find the resource material in olden days like in earlier days it is very difficult to find the sample case file or sample document or documentation for a flow plus bluff body or some any fundamental problem but the interesting thing is how in foci case study a uh, initiative have around i think 150 or 100 plus sample cases along with the documentation so if you want to explore some let's say ev thermal management system some sample cases are available in their repository you can just download it and install it along with they are also neatly documented it so as a beginner it will be very very helpful for you to refer the case study projects available in the foci website okay so moving on to the next topic so we use command line interface mostly in open forms rather than a gui okay so command line interface as you know already so probably you you might those who are not familiar with open form or not familiar with ubuntu it will be very very irritating to type all these commands each and every time right so if you type block mesh if your m is not capital it will give some error so what is the advantage or why we are still working on this olden idea of command line interface rather than gui any thoughts sir customized modification is possible sir yes so let me show you a simple example so when i attended the previous session so there was questions from students where is this p file where is this u file or where i should mention this uh, uh, nu that is Uh, dynamic viscosity or kinematic viscosity what uh, kinematic viscosity values etc right so basically i hope you might be knowing open form is certain open form sample case it contains certain number of files right so there is a difference in the open form version i use i am using a software known as blue cfd to install uh, open form in my pc so i felt this is very convenient you can try this after the workshop because Workshop of everything they plan based on WSL or uh, Ubuntu virtual box. So Blue CFD is a third party software. It is free to all and it's very convenient to work with Windows system. You don't need to install a separate software, separate virtual box or anything for using open form. So, and also you don't need to type CP, CD, all those commands every time. So let me just show you the application of uh, command line. So I just right click and open Blue CFD terminal. I will get this terminal. Okay. So you can explore this after the workshop because in the workshop everything we plan based on WSL or virtual box. Okay. So let us say you already <laughs> run this cavity tutorial and you don't know there are multiple folders: zero folders, constant folders, system folders, etc. Right. So zero folder there is some more files: P, U, etc. And constant folder you have poly mesh, transport properties, etc. and system folder there are multiple folders so it will very it is very very difficult for us to identify in which file if you are let's say in which file you need to give the uh, uh, kinematic viscosity so if you do with gui what we need to do we just need to open each and every file and just type control f and find a new right so instead of that i'll just demonstrate the application of Uh, terminal in commands or command line interface i will just type a command grep hyphen r then type in new so grep hyphen r basically search the commands search a keyword followed by this grep that is in new 
in the files so right now my folder is at posi and cavity so I, when i just type grp hyphen r then in you you can clearly mention i should go to constant then transfer properties there i will find the in you line okay so this is just an example so for time being you can explore this i will just copy paste this in the chat box you can also grp if you want to just type uh, zero boundary condition or yes zero gradient so grp hyphen r then zero gradient so these are the two files two situations in which we use zero gradient and first one is p p itself p itself there are two lines in which we use zero gradient okay so this is very very convenient so right now i just showed a simple example so let us say you don't know some of the special boundary conditions available in open form and you don't know which tutorial they considered so you just go to the open form tutorial uh, tutorial folder just type zero gradient so i will just type an example yes so i just open the tutorial folder as such so if tutorial folder we have multiple Uh, solvers basic to all stress analysis i just wanted to know in any case they used a boundary condition called cyclic boundary condition so i just type grp space hyphen r just type cyclic so i will get all those corresponding uh, files i can just go to these these tutorials if i want to explore more so let us say i just wanted to know only incompressible then cd incompressible then type grp so in compressible itself i can find there are multiple folders or multiple tutorials they explored the cyclic boundary condition so this i just wanted to demonstrate the application of command line interface initially it may be irritating uh, and later stage you will start loving it okay so before we move on so when we learn some new software you should also know why we need to spend or why we need to invest this much of time and uh, time for learning a software and whether it will make us m and m whether this adding or learning this open form skill whether it is beneficial for job or industry so these are some of the companies multi billion multi national companies in which they started using open form as their cfd packages along with the commercial softwares like boeing pfizer gm amd 3m magna etc and there are also multiple startups along with this uh, multi multi multinational companies there are certain startups also like esa total sim sim scale pando cfd etc they are also working working on open form based simulation so soon you can start you will start seeing that more industry slowly moving towards open source software so learning this software is actually an additional skill and that will make you employable once you complete your course and another thing i said is lack of gui so there are certain startup companies they started working on developing dedicated gui for open form some of them are simscape then blue cape simflow helix simbus etc and i also learned that posi team is also developing a gui and there is a session by posi team i think tomorrow i am also eager to attend that session so these are some of the difficulties faced by the open form community and these companies are actually uh, uh, helping us to resolve those difficulties and promoting the open form software Yes. So let me move on to the uh, technical part. So we use computational fluid dynamics for doing or for analyzing something, right? So there are certain terms we should clearly follow when we start our computation. First one is experimental validation. So we know that we are actually using some sort of governing equation and we are applying it to physical problem and we are solving it using computer. So it is quite obvious that we may get incorrect result, right? So if you are doing some mistakes in the boundary conditions, so some mistakes in the solver settings, we will get incorrect answers. So the first part when we do our CFD simulation is we should compare our results with the experiment results. If you have our own experimental facility, it's fine. We can compare the results with us, or we can just compare the results with the available results in the literature. So this particular figure shows the comparison of so CFD code application nuclear CFD. so experiment versus simulation you can see you can find the liquid air water interface for the simulation is in this or from the experiment is in this way and you can also note that for simulation it is more or less same 
so this will make sure that our computations are correct our results are correct so if you are not doing the experimental validation so if you are submitting some paper somewhere or if you are presenting somewhere so the first question they will ask is how can we make, make sure that our results are correct okay so that is first part and second part is grid independence so as i said earlier we are dividing the domain into certain number of cells right so we know that if you increase the number of cells it will take more time for computing the results so we need to make sure that our results are independent of this grid so there is some critical number in which our results will be independent of grid so i will explain that in the subsequent slide and the third case or third part is time step independence so when we do unsteady simulations so those who already did unsteady simulations they may be knowing we, we, we will be giving some dt value or time step value for doing the completing the simulation and the dt value selection of dt value is also very very important we we may get a result if we take dt value that is time step as 0.1 and we may get a different result if we take time step as 0.01 so we need to make sure that the time step independent results are obtained when we do the simulation so these are some of the resources available for experimental validation doing experiment is very very costly affair so there are certain websites uh, initiated by different communities like uh, nasa they actually uh, uh, shared their some of the interesting experimental results and anyone can download and make use of it so for overview validation and verification they have certain websites as well as some test cases as well as benchmark cases are available for basic flow as well as heat transfer problems and multi phase problems so these are some of the repositories available in open uh, uh, available to all and we can make use of these repositories for validation some of them are like ercofact database nasa the university of manchester etc so let me move on to grid independence okay so what do we mean by grid independence i said earlier that we are dividing the domain into certain number of cells right so we need to make sure that this number of cells are independent of uh, the results are independent of number of cells so i would like to explain this with an analogy so this is not related to cfd but numerical method so let us say i want to draw a circle okay so right now i will just start with only four points and i am just going to connect it with a straight line okay so the second case is i will just increase the number of points instead of 4 i will keep 6 8 and again i will connect this with straight line and third case it will be obvious to you now i will increase it so from 8 i will just increase It took sixteen. So four, eight, sixteen. So I think picture is more you now. It's more clear to you what is going to happen. So we are go closely moving towards a circle from a rectangular, right? So when we increase it to thirty-two, I hope you it is clear to you what is going to happen. So I'm just I'm not repeating it. so in this particular example what we can see is when we increase the number of cells we are actually moving towards our required geometry right so i will just going to tabulate it so the number of points just four and i am also calculating the area so we know that area for let's say it's a one unit circle so area for that circular circle is known so a minus a dash a dash is the required area so basically it gives a error between the obtained value and the actual value so 4 8 16 32 etc so we will calculate a a value and we will find the error so it is very obvious that what happens if we just plot this in the n versus error or percentage error percentage error means you will just divide it with the reference in the 100 so what happens it is slowly moving towards zero right so there is a point in which if you take n is equal to say 64 and 124 the percentage error will be less than 1 percentage or less than 2 percentage okay so what we can say 
the geometry or the area we are going to calculate is independent of the number of points we cannot completely say independent it is well below 1 percentage or 0.5 percentage we can say in that way right so this is the brief overview of the grid independent solution so when we do numerical simulation so this in this particular case we clearly know that the final value that is a zero value is very like known to us but in actual flow problems we may not be knowing the final solution so in that scenario what we do we'll just start with an arbitrary grid let's say g1 so let's say this is uh, 100 then 200 or 400 or 1000 then what we do let's say if you are considering a flow problem we will just explore or we'll just extract the velocity profile at certain plane and we will just compare for different grids and what we can say is once we increase the grid the error percentage error between g1 g2 g3 uh, reduces and if it is less than one percentage we can say that we are since the uh, percentage error between g3 and g4 is less than one percentage and we are selecting this particular grid for doing subsequent simulation so we this is first second part first part is validation as i said earlier second part is we need to make sure that our results are independent of the first. So grid independence is the second step you should follow when we do a systematic computation or scientific computing. This is just an, another example. So here they made a rabbit with some elements. So you can see the number of elements. When we increase the number of elements, the rabbit will become more and clearer and clearer. So this is just an example, not from CFD, but finite, body, finite element of that. So yes. So this is an example from our cavity problems we are doing. When we do a coarse mesh, we may not get an accurate, accurate result, but when we have a medium mesh or fine mesh, you can see the medium mesh and fine mesh, there is some similarity. So if you go with a very fine mesh, you will see the difference between the fine mesh and very fine mesh will be very less. So in computer and fluid dynamics, if you want to create some uh, simulations, we should follow some steps. The first one is, let's say a physical problem, right? So we need to convert, uh, we, we need to make a geometry. So if it is a lid driven cavity problem, we need to make a rectangular block. Then after that, what we need to do is we should generate mesh. So once we generate mesh, what we need to do, we need to prepare our case. We should clearly mention the package or see if open form or ANSYS, what are the boundary conditions, whether it is laminar flow or turbulent flow or if it is a heat transfer problem or mass transfer is also there or not. So we need to prepare the cases. Then we will be doing the simulation that is fourth part that is run, uh, running cases. And finally, the post-processing of the results. So we use open uh, paraform for post-processing the results. So the right hand side is an animation made using a Blender software. Blender is a software, open source software widely used by for animation purpose. So nowadays people are using or paraform results along with the blender to get the more realistic animation. So we can clearly see it is far better than the paraform results, right? So these are additional things in which you can explore for visualizing your results. So this particular figure just show a uh, mesh corresponding to ship. Okay, then we are moving towards mesh generation. So as I said earlier, basically we are dividing the domain into certain number of cells. Right, that particular process is known as meshing or mesh generation. So this is a simple case rectangular block. We are just dividing it into certain number of cells in X direction, Y direction, Z direction, just dividing into let's say 20, 20, 20. So we are generating the mesh. But in actual case, our geometry will not be very smooth or very regular like this. So we may have some curvilinear faces. We may have some protrusion somewhere. So the meshing, you cannot always get this hexagonal mesh or rectangular mesh always. So we, there are multiple types of mesh elements. So some of them are tetrahedron, hexagonal, so some pyramids, polyhedral, etc. So these are some of the mesh uh, cell elements or mesh elements we use, usually use in our simulations. So in order to do meshing, what are the things required? So you know that when we, have, when we make a geometry, we should know first thing is we should know the vertices. And these vertices will be connected by lines, right? And these lines will be connected by surface. And these surfaces will be, finally, it will make a cell volume, right? So this is the hierarchy we use for mesh generation. So we can classify, generally, we can classify different meshes. 
or mesh generation method do first one is structured grid and second one is unstructured grid so structured grid as the name indicates it is well structured grid so but this figure shows a typical example for a structured grid the grid points are placed at the intersection of coordinate lines and interior grid points have a fixed number of neighboring grid points so what do we mean by that i will explain the later stage so and grid points can be mapped into matrix their location in the grid structure in the matrix matrices will be given by ij so those are some indices so let us say i wanted to focus on this particular grid and i can easily find who are the neighbors right so if i just consider that i don't know whether you are familiar with this notation if it is a two dimensional one the neighbor is going to be i plus 1 j i minus 1 j and the top and bottom i j plus 1 and i j minus 1 all right so it is very easy for us to identify the neighbors for this particular this particular cell so this is very very important when we discretize the equation and apply it and some in structured grid itself we can have a uniform mesh and non uniform mesh so non uniform mesh there are some cases we may need very fine uh, refined mesh near the walls or near some interfaces so we may use different cell height and those kind of cells are known as non uniform mesh and the equally spaced cells are known as uniform mesh and it is not necessary that we can we should have a rectangular or a orthogonal purely orthogonal grid you can also have a slightly modified non orthogonal grid also okay so in the subsequent slide i will explain some parameters to check the quality of the mesh and regarding the unstructured grid as compared to structured grid unstructured grid it can have control volume with any shape and there are no restrictions to number of adjacent cells so in earlier case we saw that for a two dimensional case we have only left hand side boundary right hand side boundary top boundary neighbor and bottom neighbor only four cells are surrounded on the other hand for an unstructured grid we can have multiple and there is multiple cells surrounded by the cell and there is no restriction on the number of adjacent cells meeting the points or along the line for a 3d case so in practical cfd typically triangles or quadrilaterals are mostly used for 2d problems and tetrahedron or hexagonal elements are used for 3d ones so if we ask why we have different meshes we should have have only unstructured or structured so there are some advantages and disadvantages first one is if you have a complex geometry typically unstructured grid generation is very easy as well as faster as compared to structured grid generation and in terms of accuracy simple geometries structured grids are more accurate compared to unstructured in general and complex geometries unstructured grids are more accurate because for structured grids the cell quality will not be that good and if you see in terms of computational time so convergence cpu time structured grid actually take less time rather than the unstructured grid so what might be the reason so the main reason is for a structured grid if i say this particular grid i don't need to clearly explain who are the neighbors so it's obvious that it is i minus 1 j i j plus 1 i plus 1 j and i j minus 1 on the other hand so if you just consider unstructured grid so there is no particular pattern so the grid neighbors are 9 1 13 for a cell zero for six it is going to be 7 5 1 so there is no pattern so in fact if you are using unstructured grid we should have a additional data storage for identifying the neighbors so for solving the neighbor states must be known and structured grid this neighbors neighbors found by adding or subtracting one from the skill indices so you don't need to have a separate memory for that but for an unstructured grid it requires storage of cell to cell pointers etc so more storage that leads to law of execution of a code so that is one of the disadvantages of the unstructured grid so the next part is quality of it so let's say you are making some grids so how do we make sure that our grid is sufficient or whether that will give a correct result or not so mesh quality decides the solution as well as accuracy solution accuracy as well as convergence of the simulation and basically we use two parameters first one is skewness and second one is aspect ratio so skewness is nothing but the angle between Uh, two uh, two edges so you can see in this particular case so we have a line here we have line here the angle between grid lines x and y is indicated by skewness so here it is indicated by theta and if you have unstructured grid 
unfettered grid so what we do we just compare what if we have a base geometry that is equivalent to triangle and we have a skewed triangle so some ratio between these so minimal cell skewness for better solution so there are certain conditions so minimal cell minimal cell skewness or minimal changes in the cell volume between the adjacent cells and aspect ratio so aspect ratio is nothing but the ratio between uh, between the edges you can see rectangular geometry triangular geometry and hexagonal geometry these are the regular shape with aspect ratio of 1 on the other hand the second case is a high aspect ratio cell so it is skewed skewed and the aspect ratio is slightly different or entirely different the suitable aspect ratio for cell selection is 0.2 to 5 and if it is more than that so that may lead to error or that may lead to some convergence issue etc and sufficient resolution in the region of rapid flow changes uh, in regions with sharp gradients or the boundary so as i said earlier when we do refinement it's also possible we can give uh, fine mesh not only near the wall but also in the areas in which we have we are expecting sharp gradients for example liquid, between liquid liquid interfaces or liquid air interfaces we can give we can give uh, refinement yes so moving on to the open form part so mesh generation in open form we basically have two utilities so first one is block mesh utility the session followed by this session by my session there is a separate tutorial for block mesh so i'm not going to detail for the block mesh as the traffic hex mesh part i'm just quickly giving an overview the block mesh we generally use for making simple geometries like a okay i will show some examples in the upcoming slide and snappy hex mesh is an advanced feature available in open form for doing uh, slightly advanced or complicated geometries so the mesh generation using block mesh very simple when we have a geometry first thing is we should know the points points will be connected by lines it will be connected by blocks and we need to identify the boundaries so more details regarding the block mesh will be explained in the upcoming slides i'm not going into detail so some to some extent we can also use block mesh for making complex geometries such as if you want to mesh a cylinder or if you want to mesh a section in this way so it is also possible with the help of multiple blocks so instead of using a single block we use multiple blocks as you can see this part this particular grids are known as l grid so we are just dividing the semi the not semi circle the 1 by 4th of the circle into multiple blocks and then we are Uh, applying the block mesh effect. so there are some examples so another example is using block mesh so this is a cylinder in which we have an o grid available here so this is an enlarged view this is isometric view this is a top view and this is an enlarged view corresponding to the geometry and snappy hex mesh so there is an ad addition the session followed by me there is the session by dheeraj sir he will be talking more about the snappy hex mesh and all so when we have a complex geometry it is also possible to do meshing in open form itself using the snappy hex mesh a utility so this is an example we need to model a car in a chamber or something so this is a process in which we use snappy hex mesh for meshing so is that all no so it is also possible to use third party software for meshing in an open form so some of the open source softwares for meshing are salo g mesh etc so these are the softwares which is having gui so you can also make geometry as well as mesh using these open source softwares or commercial software such as ansys icm cfd or hypermesh etc and we can save that meshes into some open form readable format let's say for an example you can save those meshes as msx file so there is an option to export the mesh so right uh, there is an ex option to export the mesh to msx file or some other format in which we can easily convert that mesh file which is made by some other software like third party software and use it in open form so i will just show you an example okay so how how is it possible you just type it through on command that's it so i will just show you an example let us say i made a geometry and mesh by using a software icm or i exported a mesh into dot msx file okay and i want to use it for open form so you do, you don't need to actually use block mesh you already made the mesh file in dot msx file you just need to convert that into open form open form 
readable format then you just type icoform if it is a cavity problem just type icoform that is forward only so we can just convert that by using a simple command fluent mesh to form followed by the file name okay i will, I will show you a demo also in the sub subsequent slide so if you just type fluent mesh to form followed by the dot msh file it will convert that mesh file into open form readable format so uh, i would prefer showing a demo now just a second so i just took a tutorial on us elbow you will find this tutorial in the open form so you can see i just copy pasted a tutorial and it's no, elbow you can find it later so the mesh file is provided here elbow.msh it's already provided so i don't need to do, make the mesh again using block mesh so what i will do is i'll just open my terminal okay yes i'm just going to type fluent mesh to form followed by name elbow.ms if i just press enter some commands are displayed and finally if there are some error it will show some error otherwise it will show n okay so i just converted .msh file into open form readable format and i'm just going to visualize it using para form so para view if i take some time in my pc yes, yes i got the mesh and you can see the mesh so this was not done by uh, block mesh or snappy x mesh third party software i just imported it the dot msh file and i just opened it in para or para right so it is also possible to do third party softwares generate mesh if you are comfortable with any software let's say or with gui if you are comfortable with any software with the gui then it is possible to make mesh there and import it here okay and the last part is very very interesting part so so far we just considered only those cases or meshes with move with so fixed boundaries so in actual cases we will also experience meshes that are moving with respect to time there is simple example is turbine blade we know that the turbine blade rotates right the solid body or solid boundary is rotating with respect to time so how to tackle those kind of situations we need to do remeshing in every time the normal cfd simulations the solid or constant ball we just need to do meshing only once in a time once in a while once before the simulation but when we have a moving mesh there are different approaches when we have moving boundaries so we need to do the meshing in a very time step so simple example some examples are shown here so this is some uh, it's, it's like turbine blade kind of thing there are four objects and it is rotating so it is rotating collectively and individually also it is rotating you can see the shape is this part if you just follow one of them you can see it is also rotating with its own axis and it is also rotating with the common axis right so we need to do meshing each time step if you want to see the simulation or if you want to get the cfd simulation so these kinds of meshes are known as dynamic meshing it is sandan bose dr sandan bose will be giving a brief overview we cover we about dynamic mesh in the upcoming session and the second case is another, this is another interesting part here we have a body solid body it is moving left to right or it's oscillating left to right right so some when it is moving towards right the meshes in this side is compressing and it is enlarging and vice versa so these are some of the challenging problems or problems we can expect when we do moving boundaries or moving body okay so with this i would like to end my session thank you any doubt sir only one doubt it's very simple sir sir how can do sir time step independent states sir yes can time you give brief brief yes, yes. yes so we need to start with an arbitrary time value dt value so generally what we do is we will refer similar problems similar problems done in the literature or we will refer some standard literature value literature and we will find the approximate range of dt values so let's say somebody took for similar problem like us somebody took 0.001 as their time step value we will just take 0.001 as their time step value then 0.4001 and 0.01 etc so this is a trial and error method and we may need to compare one of the parameters like crawl number 
for some frequencies in order to know whether our results are independent of time step is that clear uh, sir for that first uh, first of all we do the sir grid independence grid yes. independence then time step right sir yes yes so for time yes grid if it is an unsteady problem what we do is we will just take a very uh, uh, arbitrary dt value and do the grid grid independence first then yes, sir, yes, with sir. that grid we can do time independence or vice versa okay sir yes, so they are yes, connected connected right Mm -hmm. So if you have an experimental result with you to compare, it's always better to compare that result. Then we can say we can identify which one is more accurate, right? Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, I want to uh, ask one question regarding like uh, if there is a complex problem for 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 say like there is a artery which is moving and blood is flowing uh, inside that. So. Yes. Uh, which uh, software will be preferred, like uh, uh, like commercial, like Ansys Fluent or OpenFoam? Like which which uh, one will be having edge or uh, which can do better, like in terms of accuracy and uh, for deformable bodies, like if artery is deformable. Yes. So it depends upon us actually. So people are actually using Snappy Express also, or some open source software like Xalom. And some of them are actually using ICM. So it's all about how you make the mesh. If you are having, if you are able to make mesh with a good quality, irrespective of the software, you will be getting the result. Okay, so it's all about meshing yes. accuracy and uh, efficiency. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, just one more question, sir. Can can I do sir coupling type of problem in open form, sir? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Like FSI. I, yes, fluid structure interaction is possible. Yes. Okay. Some um, actually yes. One point I forgot to mention. So open form uh, is a open source software. Right? So there are different groups. They modify, they tweak the open form version according to their requirement. We know that in Android, the companies Google provide Android, but for different manufacturers, they tune, fine tune their Android according to them. Right? Nokia or Xiaomi. Similarly, some companies fine tune this open form version according to that their requirement, or they will slightly improve it. So FSA, I think form extend. There is a version of open form and form extend. I think they are having mm -hmm. a dedicated solver for FSA. Please do. Just find it. I'm not sure about form extend. There is a dedicated tweak of open form version for this particular FSA. You can just find it out. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, it is possible. Machine learning is also possible now. People are exploring machine learning for CFD analysis. Yes. Uh, I have one one question, uh, Doctor Hari Krishna. Yes. So this yes. unstructured mesh, like, is it de determined by the complexity of the geometry or the complexity of the flow? Normally, it is related to complexity of the geometry and the effort required for meshing. Okay. It is also okay. possible for a same problem. Okay. We can do with structured mesh and unstructured mesh. Okay. But if the geometry is very, very complicated, let's say car, a, a car, there are multiple objects inside it. So making structured mesh will be very, very difficult. But it may take uh, maybe 10 to 15 days for only meshing for structured mesh. On the other hand, it may take only one day for making unstructured mesh. We just say that these are the boundaries in which we need refinement. And the other part, we can just keep coarse mesh. So within, within less time, we can make unstructured mesh. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, yes sir. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Actually, for, uh, uh, for geometry, we, we can be different geometry and also if we also choose the geometry for the output, coating thickness, for uh, some uh, micrometer thickness. thickness. Okay. We, have to, we have to define the uh, surface of the geometry and also we have to define the coating thickness of 5 micrometer. Can we define it in the uh, open form? Can you repeat it again? What thickness I didn't get you? Five, five micrometer. Yes. What geometry is used? Uh, for uh, choosing an airfoil. Uh, yes, it is possible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, we can uh, get the uh, solution of uh, some natural number uh, for the uh, thickness and also for the surface. Yes. Yes. For the, is that possible? So I, yes. I didn't explode airfoil, but for a simple. Uh, rectangular geometry, it is possible. You can just give a non uniform mesh with a given. Yeah. But in uh, height, like, like a thin yes. thing, you can define. Yes, yes, yes. 
you can get the heat transfer equation and you can get the heat transfer results of the both the surface yeah 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 yes okay yeah. Uh, okay so now let me check yeah okay one last question anyone sir one question yes. sir yes yes Uh, sir, in case of a structured grid, sir, suppose uh, we have complex geometry like bifurcation region or any other, uh, where the flow of physics is, uh, changes very much, sir. So at yeah. that time, sir, in case of a structured, we have to refine that area, sir, or uh, it is good, sir, uh, only for a structured grid. No, no, no. Non-uniform, you can give in a structured mesh also. So wherever we generally, what we do is wherever we can expect deeper gradient. near the boundaries or some interfaces we can yes, give sir, refinement uh, yes sir we we actually refine in case of uh, unstructured grid but uh, in structured also yes it is possible okay. one figure i showed hmm. non uniform mesh grid figure i showed is actually so structured yeah yeah these are rectangular geometry okay, grid cells right and one one more doubt sir yes. uh, sir for checking mesh quality sometimes we use sir uh, orthogonality or uh, like that yes yes or sir uh, just, um, And the orthogonality when orthogonality is near to one that that it is considered to be good right yes, yes. so sir wh what type of orthogonality we use sir sometimes uh, it shows sir minimum average maximum three types of visual yes, 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 yes. so which one we consider so, sir so it should be in a range we would say like let's say orthogonality range of 0.2 to 5 sometimes you know when we have a very poor mesh We will have minimum value of 10 raised to minus 3 and maximum value of 10 raised to 5. So that we don't prefer. So, so we consider only minimum minimum range. No, no. I'm saying it should be in the same order of magnitude. Minimum, maximum, mm -hmm. average. More or less in the same order of magnitude. Oh. You understood? So point two, one, uh, and five. They are in the same order of magnitude, right? But 10 raised to minus 3, one, and 10 raised to five. So the, there is a Order magnitude difference of 10 raised to 8 from minimum to maximum. So that that may give errors when we do the thing. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. If there are no doubts, then I will end. Okay. Thank you very much.